great pleasure to welcome you on the second day of the festival of uh, dream science and um, we have all the five winners i say winners because if you have a dream in science you are already a winner you already bought a ticket a lot of ticket for the success in science and they did it and then if you are brave enough if you dare you write it down how many of you had dreams which you actually wrote down on a piece of paper? This is my dream and I will follow it in my life. Oh, there is a girl. Cool, Sakshi. <laughs> and finally, they actually got into the finals, which was not easy. So uh, we have five winners and uh, they got a token. <laughs> to show that they are the winners. So I asked the director of the Institute and Pavel from the Institute of Organic Chemistry and Biochemistry to actually uh, give the diplomas. Usually the diplomas are made out of paper. Uh, this one is made of wood and metal. So they're really, sp I would love to get one. I do not qualify, unfortunately. So. Uh, yeah, thank you, Robert. So it's my pleasure to award all competitors, winner or members of festival, if you like. And it will be, m I hope, more or less like uh, Oscar ceremony. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not Will Smith. So <laughs> <laughs> you can feel safe. <laughs> so, uh, we have five winners. or And the first, pr uh, not first, one of the five. Five prizes goes to Ahmed Badran. <laughs> okay. To Karl Brozek. Claudia Contini. <laughs> to Gilan Van Tom. So I am thanks. And it goes to Karl Brozek. Uh, congratulations on the, of your win, of your win, winning the Dream Chemistry Award. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, curious to hear what will now change in your life uh, because your dreams are coming uh, closer to become real. Hmm. Um, the, the dream that I talked about while I was here, it really has been a dream since before I even started my job as a professor. And I never really felt like it was something that was even worth talking to my students about. In fact, 
the, uh, uh, some of the data that I showed yesterday, I collected myself because I felt like I needed to do it because it really felt like so out pie in the sky that there is no way that a grant agency would be interested or even a student would be interested. And now I feel like it's definitely something that um, I'm inspired to bring to grant agencies and my students. And I think it's also, um, it's going to inspire my students. And I think one of the great things about this, this competition, this festival, is um, how much it helps us practice and learn science communication. And I think I've gotten much better at communicating this dream so that I can talk to my students about it and they can talk to each other about it. I think that's one of the big things that's going to, that, one of the huge benefits of this, this whole festival. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned grants, yeah. uh, and grants are typically about short-term mm -hmm. short perspective. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you showed us a dream, something long-term. So how important are these long-term goals in the scientific career? Yeah, I, I think uh, if you have a long-term goal, a long-term vision, it's going to influence every little step that you take along the way. The same way that um, I talk to my students about how um, when they have a project, their project, they should think of it as a long-term thesis goal. And that, that should influence everything that they do on a day-to-day -day basis, a week-to-week -week basis. And if they're only thinking about what is their goal for that week, then when it comes time, when they look five years from now, 10 years from now, what they've done, um, it's, it may not have the impact that they hoped for. And I think, you know, we as scientists always need to be thinking, what is that dream, what is that vision, so that it guides us on our day-to-day, week-to-week uh, level. Otherwise, you know, I sort of, we're, we're lost in the woods. And I think the only way to have a real impact is to remember that we have to be thinking long-term. So uh, you have a well-established group. Um, you are working right now on, we have seen, on challenging problems. And could you say us a bit about these challenging problems that you are solving right now uh, that are bringing you closer to make your dream really true, come yeah, true. Yeah, um, one of the biggest challenges that we've been um, trying to address is uh, how to uh, uh, let society use our materials in a way that um, is actually practically relevant. There are a lot of materials that, um, in general, and across material science, people talk about it, uh, its properties and how it works um, in an academic lab. And um, there's not a lot of thought often about what would this actually look like if someone, if, if, um, if ExxonMobil was going to use this on a huge scale. You know, how can we actually make that jump? And this is something that I've thought about um, since I was a student, young, you know, early on. Is, as, as academic chemists, we often think about, uh, or we often say, well, this works in, my, in front of me in the fume hood. And it's someone else's problem to try to figure out how to actually make it have an impact in society. And I thought, you know, someone has to take those extra steps and say, no, let's, let's bring it closer to society. It's not just give it to the engineers. Like, you know, me as whatever kind of scientist I am, chemist or material scientist, I need to figure out how to, how to address those other serious um, research challenges that separate what we do in a lab and um, in society. And so one of the particular areas that we're looking at is how do we use these really porous materials uh, to filter water? Um, you know, so water, water scarcity is a huge problem. Um, it's going to become a bigger and bigger problem across the world. And this is something that um, the U.S. government cares a lot about. There's a, this report that came out recently called the uh, Municipal Report um, uh, um, uh, put out by uh, the National Alliance for Water Innovation. And they specifically said that we need to be thinking about uh, porous materials, membranes made out of porous materials, but we don't really know how to do that yet. And I thought that was incredibly inspirational that the sort of materials that we're focusing on, uh, the U.S. government specifically said, these are the sort of things we need to be exploring. Um, and so that's, that's one area that we're really interested in. Um, the other one is uh, thinking about a sustainable future. Uh, we need to find ways to replace lithium ion batteries. And uh, to do that, it's not just about saying, hey, let's replace the lithium with something else, sodium or something. The whole thing needs to change. And, um, and so we're looking at the full picture, all the components of a battery, and how, if we're going to go from lithium to something else, what, what are all the things that need to change? And it's not just small tweaks that, you know, engineers could do. It requires real fundamental science. 
and it requires completely rethinking the way that these that these things are made. Um, you know, and it's not just the individual atoms, but like, what is the total material, um, and you know, how it comes together? Is it porous? Is it not porous? Um, and so that's that's one of the other big areas that that we're I think we can really address. It might become yeah. a subject of another dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah. in your dream that you presented us uh, yesterday. Uh, you mentioned the recovery mm. of a low-grade heat. Yeah. Uh, in the time of an energy crisis, <laughs> it sounds like an uh, um, extremely important yes. thing. And uh, for people to understand what your dream is about, it would be nice to, 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 to elaborate a bit more on this topic. Could you please yeah. say a few, few words about this? Absolutely. So, um, about half of all energy that we use whether it's energy going into lights, energy going into the, batter uh, the, the batteries that we use in our cars, everywhere, about half of it gets lost as just heat. And we don't do anything to try to recover that heat. And that's a tremendous amount of energy. And uh, the, one of the tricky things is that most of that heat is just the temperature of a room. And it turns out that unless that heat is really, really hot, it's almost impossible to recover that heat and do something useful with it. And it's so challenging that even though obviously this is an incredibly important problem, there's almost no technology that exists to actually do this. And um, the technology exists to say, hey, if you, have, if you have something that's thousands of degrees, well, maybe we have a way to recover some of that and, and do work with it. Um, but there's really no way to say the energy that's in the room around us right now how do we capture as much as this as, as possible and do something with it? And there's basically no, no way to do it. And that's why my dream really is to say, hey, let's at least start working in the direction to be able to do that. And um, the, the current technology that sort of exists, you wouldn't even be able to power um, a little light bulb, you know, with the technology that exists. And my dream is to be able to say, let's take this, this type of heat that's around us and be able to to power your iPhone or to power these lights, you know, like do, you know, actually useful work, so. Do you think in something like 20 years it will be possible to charge a phone, yeah. let's say using the, the energy generated by, for example, walls that surround us? Yeah. Because we have right now the temperature right, gradient. Right, right, exactly. So that's exactly the Exactly, yes, exactly, okay. yeah. I, and I, I think it's possible and I think it just requires, I mean, humans are incredibly innovative and I think um, you have to, if you, if you point people in the right direction, then it's, it's remarkable how much we can achieve in a short period of time. But it often, I mean, it also requires the inspiration or, or showing people the way in which they need to be thinking about a problem. And so that's part of this dream here. I, I don't think I have all the answers for how to do this, but I'm hoping that my dream is to get chemists to think about some of these problems in a way that's different enough, with enough human ingenuity that yes, we can be powering uh, 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 you know, cars maybe even, just by harnessing the temperature gradient in the rooms that are surrounding us right now. Yeah, yeah. the dreams of today, <laughs> of today becomes the science of tomorrow. Right, yes? right, right. Uh, okay, so uh, maybe the last question. Uh, there are uh, many uh, young scientists around. You have your, them in your group. Uh, <sighs> we have them here, uh, everywhere around the world. Uh, what would be your message to them? Mm. Should they dream or uh, what is your advice or message to them? Yeah, I, I think, um, so I, like I, I said before, I think one of the greatest things about this, this Dream Chemistry Festival is um, that it forces you to not just think about your dream, you have to think about a dream that really personally matters to you. That's not something that a lot of people have a lot of practice doing. A lot of people say, hey, there's this field out there. I'm going to be one of the people who goes after that field. Very few people get to actually practice what do you personally care about? Because I think science ultimately is a very personal endeavor. You know, there's no such thing as uh, something is intrinsically better to study than something else. It's, it's a personal decision. And the second thing, so I think people need to practice that uh, every day. And I think the second thing is to practice communicating it. I found in teaching, in talking to friends, in talking to family, the more that you try to articulate your dream, the more you actually think about it, and I think the, and the better your idea gets. And I, so I, I think it's something that people, that young scientists need to be practicing as, for, as, as, as much as possible. Yeah, and to realize that it, it comes from themselves. It doesn't come from their boss telling them, this is what you need to study. It really comes from, 
from who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Once again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.